So now let's talk about mnemonics with this whole part of our notes on encoding and how we can use mnemonics to get more into our or how we can encode better and get more into our long-term memory. So imagery is at the heart of many memory aids and mnemonic techniques that use vivid imagery in aiding memory are rather effective. And we have three here that we're going to talk about. Um, first, you have to know that meaning and memory are besties, okay? So anything that you can put some kind of meaning to, especially meaning that you already have in your brain is going to be huge. So let's talk about the three mnemonics. We have method of loci, and I want you to think of loci as location. It involves imagining moving through a familiar series of locations with items to be remembered. So let's say that you have to bring this list of items to class. Paintbrush, world map, laptop, textbook, colored book, pencils, and computer paper, as if you'd have to bring those, but let's just say that that's your list that you need to remember. What you'll do is imagine locations, let's say throughout our school, and you'll put each one of these items into that location. So again, it's visual imagery, and you'll say, okay, I'm gonna put my paintbrush in Mrs. Schorsch's room, because that's an art room, that makes sense. I'm gonna put a world map that I have to bring in Mr. Taylor's room, I'll, my laptop, I'm gonna put that in Mrs. Kulschmidt's room, and let's say you just go through all these teachers. And you, you can't just say each of these to yourself. You have to imagine it. You have to bring some visualization to the method of loci in order for it to be effective. Peg word, you first have to memorize the jingle on here, over here on the left. One is bun, two is shoe, three is tree, four is door, five is hive, and so on, and six is stick, seven is heaven, stuff like that. Then you associate that jingle with a list, trying to remember, even better being if you can visualize the items, trying to remember that item. So let's say it's a grocery list you have to remember, okay? Uh, lettuce, banana, cheese, tomatoes. So what you'll do is visualize each of the items on a list with each of the lines in the jingle. So you put lettuce on a bun. You put a banana, visually you put a banana and insert it into a shoe. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but because you're visualizing it, it will work. Um, you put cheese in a tree and you put a tomato like on your door. You like maybe you throw the tomato at your door, I don't know. And you visualize this so where when you say one is bun, okay, what did I put on the bun? Oh, I put lettuce on the bun. What did I put in the shoe? I put a banana in the shoe. It'll help you to, to retrieve that. The link method is kind of a very simple one. It just involves forming a mental image of items to be remembered in a way that links them together. Okay, so if I have to memorize this list of items, I'm going to memorize myself putting shaving cream on newspaper and then using my pen to write on the newspaper through the shaving cream while putting up my umbrella to avoid getting my newspaper wet from the rain. Something like that. And then I turn on my lamp to help me see all of this better. And because I'm kind of telling a story and linking all of these things, I can remember each of them better. Chunking, we kind of talked about this is simply organizing items into familiar, manageable units. So try to remember the numbers below. If you are well-versed with American history, you could chunk the numbers and see if you can recall it even easier with these very memorable years. Acronyms are another way to chunk information and remember them. So Holmes, um, Roy G. Biv, all of these being examples of acronyms you have probably learned in your life before, um, and that is just the beginning of each of the letters of the names or items that you have to remember. This would be an example of chunking because you're making very a larger amount of information grouped into a smaller amount.